Hey guys, wanted to talk to you a little bit this morning just about um, some stuff coming out of the book of Daniel. I've been reading through the book of Daniel in uh, my personal time and I notice, you know, how you'll like read something and then you'll come back and look at it another time and you'll catch things that you missed before. And we all kind of know the story of Daniel, right? He is taken from, from uh, Jerusalem, made it an exile in Babylon. While he's there, he sort of begins to be the guy for for the, the King Nebuchadnezzar. And, and essentially what happens is, he like he interprets dreams. He is faithful to the Lord, super faithful to the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar even begins to say things that sound like a whole lot like a Southern Baptist preacher, even even as a pagan king. And and he starts he starts to get this thing. And so what happens is, this is leading into the lions den. We all kind of know that. And and if you if you're not familiar with the story, essentially Daniel, what happens is he starts to really gain power as he is faithful to the Lord and he interprets these dreams and he has become somebody that King Nebuchadnezzar can rely on and depend on. And so leading into Daniel chapter six, you've, you've got this picture progression for him of moving from just a guy that was sort of the exiled, going to be some, you know, one of the, one of the exiled people that is in the king's house. They were trying to, trying to help, um, help the king's house. And they brought in, they brought in like five or six guys, maybe more than that, young guys that they were going to mold into the kind of the men of the king's house. But he's just because of his faithfulness to the Lord, has just seen this crazy progression and, be, and is in a spot. If you read Jeff, Daniel chapter 6, it says that essentially they were going to make him um, a, like over the entire kingdom. Talk about Daniel, right? An exile from Jerusalem gets moved into Babylon, not even native to there. They're about to make him king, like uh, not king, but to head over all of the kingdom. And uh, Obviously, that spurs on some jealousy. There's some guys in there that have been looking for that kind of power and that kind of deal, and, and they think, man, we've got to get after Daniel. We have to somehow show to the king that Daniel isn't everything you think he is. He's not as loyal to you as he thinks he is, or, or, or maybe attack him personally. And so they start digging into Daniel, and this is one of my favorite things. They start digging and digging and digging, and, they, and then here in, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 4, this is what they find. This is what they say. I, I, I hope and pray that one day this will be said of me. Um, it says, Then the presidents and the satraps sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault because, listen to this, because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. So before we get to verse 5, they looked and looked and looked. They, you know, in modern day age, this is, they looked at, you know, with, with all the Hillary stuff and in the, in the Trump stuff. They looked at his IRS records. They looked at his emails. They looked at his, you know, his personal life. They looked at all of his possible ways that he could have done anything. And what they found was he is faithful, right? They found nothing. There was no error in him. Like, praise God, that's the work of a good God and a young man that he could be that. Remember, Daniel is young. He is, he's got his working faithfully through this young man. And then check this out. So that verse four. So they decide like, well, we can't just give up, right? We've got to continue to pursue Daniel. We've got to find a way to knock him off his high horse and, and, and decrease the favor of the king on him. And so this is what they say. They say, verse five, it says, then these men said, we shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. I, they can't find anything. And so what they do is they're going to look to his faithfulness and find fault with his faithfulness. If that's ever said of me, I, I can't, I'm not going to be able to do anything but get on my knees and praise the Lord. Right? Like, basically what they just said was the only way we're going to find a way to knock this guy off of his track for progression to being head over the kingdom is to attack his faithfulness to God because that's the only thing that he's more loyal to. And I, man alive, I just hope that's said of me. I hope that's said of y'all. Um, what, so what's happening here, so, and we all kind of know how the end of the story goes, right? Eventually they create a bunch of, of bogus laws that says that they may, if somebody won't bow to the king or won't, do, or won't only pray to the king, that he's going to be punished and thrown in the lion's den. The king like loves that. Nebuchadnezzar is all about that. And then Daniel, obviously, because he's faithful to the Lord and will not bow and will not pray to anything but the one true God, is then thrown in the lion's den. Thrown in there, hangs out there for a night. God shuts the mouths of the lions. Says that says that they open the, 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 the den back up and he's just chilling. They're probably purring, you know, like leaning on his shoulder like a like a house cat. And and so they, you know, the king pulls him out, is praising the Lord that he's saved, and in response sends the men, the men that put him there, throws them in. It says that they were clawed to death before they even hit the ground. That's what I'm talking about, right? Um, but but let's back to verse five. What they found 
to, to attack him with is something that I hope we're all seeking, right? They, they looked over everything they could find and they found him above reproach and blameless. They couldn't find anything except his faithfulness. And so what did they attack? They attacked his faithfulness. I think that's where we are as Christians in this day and age. I've, I've kind of started to formulate this idea that I feel like, especially where I live and sort of the southern, southeastern part of America, that we're in a post-Christian culture where it's easy to play Christian, it's easy to say the words of Christian, but if you start looking at your life, you can see marked areas of unfaithfulness all, all just rot throughout our lives. And, and I look at Daniel, and he's in the midst of a culture where it would have been easy to be unfaithful. It would have been easy for him to be just sort of assimilated into the pagan culture. It probably would have even been a, a faster track to progress in his mind. It obviously wouldn't have worked that way because of the faithfulness of the Lord that really caused that. But in his mind, it probably would have made more sense to just assimilate into the culture, but he didn't. He stood as faithful amidst a culture that said, that's crazy, right? And then when these men started looking into him, they couldn't find anything to attack him on. They couldn't find any nasty skeletons. They couldn't find any like weird, you know, weird things that he had done in his life or unfaithful things that he had done in his life. The only thing they had to attack was his relationship with the Lord. And I, I hope that that's our hope and our desire, that we would be in the midst of a culture that's clearly, like if you look around you, clearly not for the Lord, like it's clearly driven against God. And yet, in the midst of that culture, we would find faithfulness more valuable than anything the culture has to offer. And then when enemies or friends or anybody really looks at our lives, they would say, man, that, Chris, that person who loves the Lord, clearly loves the Lord. Like it is evident in everything that they do and their faithfulness is the only thing I could ever attack, right? I pray that we would be a lot more like Daniel, that if men and women would look into our lives as Christians, because we're saved by the blood of Christ and because Christ has saved us and because we're empowered by the Holy Spirit through that, they'd be able to say like, man, gosh, that person, whoever that is, Spencer, whoever, they are so committed to Christ because of what Christ has done for them that the only thing we could attack is their love for the Lord. And if that's what you want to attack, come on. That's a, that's a good thing for you to try and attack because ultimately that's, that's not something I have to uphold. That's something the Lord himself upholds and nobody's beaten that. So I hope that's encouraging to you. It was encouraging to me this week as I thought about Daniel and I just hope as a young man, a younger man, I guess, um, that one day that will be said of me that, that, and, maybe, and hope that's something that you want said of you, that I found no error. The only thing I can attack is the faithfulness that he has to his God. Love y'all. Next week.